Hi, I'm Sean Davis, and this is Let Your Kingdom Come. Today, we're going to be looking at Paul and Silas in Acts 16, 16 through 33, and this is Freedom Friday. So here we go with Acts chapter 16, starting with verse 16. Paul and Silas in prison. Once, as we were on our way to prayer, a slave girl met us who had a spirit of prediction. She made a large profit for her owners by fortune-telling. As she followed Paul and us, she cried out, These men who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation are the slaves of the Most High God. And she did this for many days. But Paul was greatly aggravated and turning to the Spirit said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out right away. When her owners saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Bringing them before the chief magistrates, they said, These men are seriously disturbing our city. They are Jews and are promoting customs that are not legal for us as Romans to adopt or practice. Then the mob joined in the attack against them, and the chief magistrates stripped off their clothes and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had inflicted many blows on them, they threw them in jail, ordering the jailer to keep them securely guarded. Receiving such an order, he put them into the inner prison and secured their feet in the stocks. A Midnight Deliverance, verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the jail were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains came loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the doors of the prison open, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself since he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul called out in a loud voice, don't harm yourself because of all of us here. Then the jailer called for lights, rushed to them and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he escorted them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the message of the Lord to him along with everyone in his house. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. Right away, he and all of his family were baptized. He brought them into the house set a meal before them, and rejoiced because he had believed God with his entire household. The slave girl had a spirit of prediction implies demonic possession. The ancients were very interested in the oracles and prophecies, hence the girl earned income from her owners. Though the girl cried out truth about Paul and his companions, Paul was greatly aggravated. Luke does not want to say why, but presumably Paul was irritated at the wild and distracting manner in which the girl carried on. Her manner would repel rather than attract crowds. Paul and Silas were arrested for cutting off the revenue from the girl's fortune telling, not for a religious violation. Paul and Silas were accused of causing civil disorder and promoting customs that were not legal among Romans. The practice of variant religion was illegal in the Roman Empire, but any activity, religious or otherwise, that risked sparking civil unrest was frowned upon. The chief magistrate acted rashly under the influence of the mob. Paul and Silas were stripped, beaten, and thrown into jail before the charges against them were investigated. Rather than being depressed or plotting escape, Paul and Silas displayed confidence in what God had in store for them. This was a powerful testimony to their prisoners. Luke does not say so, but clearly the violent earthquake was an act of God in response to the prayers and praises of Paul and Silas. The jailer understood this. If prisoners had escaped, their Roman guards or jailers were forced to serve their sentences. Believing his prisoners had escaped, the Philippian jailer preferred a quick death over imprisonment or execution. The jailer fell down trembling because he realized the earthquake was supernatural. 
This prompted him to ask the most important question in the book of Acts, what must I do to be saved? He was spared from death in the earthquake, spared from suicide by the discovery that the prisoners had not fled, and now wanted to be spared from God's future judgment. Paul and Silas had a direct answer for the straightforward question, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Now let's pray together. God, we thank you for this word today in the 16th chapter of Acts, Lord God. We thank you for Paul and Silas, Lord. We thank you for this chapter, Lord God, in the Bible. We thank you that our praises and our circumstances that you bring freedom, Lord Jesus, that through Jesus Christ, the living Christ, there is freedom from all oppression. Lord Jesus, right now, right now, Lord Jesus, as we pray, you are giving freedom through the Spirit and by the Spirit. Lord God, you're loosing shackles. You're loosing the stocks of the whole jail, Lord God, of the whole prison that we may be in, Lord God, that those who are listening may be in, Lord God. Right now, you're freeing them from all oppression. You're freeing them from all depression. You're freeing them from every work of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the name above all names, there's freedom in the name of Jesus. And those that Jesus sets free are free indeed. And right now, in the name of Jesus, freedom Freedom, 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 freedom right now in the name of Jesus. A release off of everyone listening right now of anything that the enemy has tried to torment or bring pain or any type of suffering. Right now we loose that right now and we release the peace of God, the peace of Jesus, the Prince of Peace Jesus right over you right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, that you give us a new life, Lord God. Lord God, you free us from all these things, Lord God. Even all these thoughts and worries right now, freedom from that in our thought life and even in our worries right now in the name of Jesus, a release of freedom through Jesus Christ right now in the name of Jesus. Just a shaking off and a shaking and an opening of the jail cell Right now, in the name of Jesus, yes, you are free. You are free in Jesus Christ, and you are a new creation. You have a new life in Jesus Christ. We thank you for that, and we thank that you're even saving families, whole families through this, Lord Jesus, that whole families are set free in the name of Jesus, and they become followers of Christ right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that families are being freed and released from bondage of the enemy. Now release Jesus into your plans and purposes into their life, Lord. Free them and open, open up every cell door right now in the name of Jesus and that they walk out new creation in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And, and Jesus, we just thank you for this word today. We thank you for freedom in you, Jesus. It's a beautiful thing, Lord. We thank you for it. So if anybody is in despair right now, in the name of Jesus, we release despair off of their life. And right now, hope and peace and joy in Jesus Christ be manifest right now in the name of Jesus in their life. And we just thank you again for this word, Lord. We do have hope because of Jesus Christ. And right now, I just release hope into your life and into your situation right now. 